morning everyone and welcome to day 22 of vlogmas today is tuesday yes the 21st of december i hope that you're all well and that you had a lovely tuesday because this is being posted on wednesday i'm very get very thrown off it's now been a month of doing this and i still get thrown off yes um yeah having a bit of a bead weaving day today i've got critical role to catch up on I have eight hours of Critical Role to watch. Um, it will not all be watched today. But I thought I would do a spot of bead weaving in preparation for East Anglia Yarn Festival um, because I'm going to be vending there on the 25th, 26th. What's the, what date is it on? I know it's Mothering Sunday and I know it's March. Um, the 26th and 27th of March at the Holiday Inn Norwich Airport I need to book room for. I need to find out if Mario's um, going to be able to come and help me or if he's going to be doing his own market. But it would be nice if he could come and help me. But then I suppose I also have my sister who could come and help me. That is, you know, hoping that everything, nothing else changes in the world. Uh, and nothing gets worse again. Not, well, I mean, we're already in the worst stage. I mean, it could get worse. Let's not think about it. Anyway, I'm beading little teacups because I had these um, as part of my Stitch Marker Club last year. And, um, yeah, you seem to like them. So I'm bead weaving them. Oh, goodness. Um... But before we jump into that, let's go make a cup of tea. seeing me making is another one by the lovely Jane of Bead Crumbs. Uh, she's a very talented pattern designer and um, some of the other stitch marker makers you may have seen crop up over the past two years I guess. Um, also use her patterns quite a lot and uh, yeah she sells her patterns and allows people to make and sell them and it's really nice. Um, I support her on Patreon as well because I don't think she charges enough for her patterns basically and um, I don't know if my business would be where it is without her creativity and talent. So thanks, Jane. I don't know if you watch my videos, but if you do, thank you. Um, but I love these little teacups and I did them in three colours for um, the Stitch Marker Club. I had an orange one uh, with, that had red dots and handles and a turquoise tea bag. I did this turquoise one and I also did a purple one using beep, 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 these purple beads, these like a light purple, it's very, very nice. Um, I'm thinking for East Anglia Yarn Festival I might do two colours of teacups. I was tempted to do this one and a purple one, but now I don't know whether to do this one and an orange one. Because not everyone likes turquoise purple pink, which have always been my go-to well, hair colour, let's be honest. They've been my go-to hair colour through the years. Um, if you're new to the video, then this is actually incredibly boring for my hair. Um, when I moved house in 2020, I lost my hair dye uh, and then let the colour grow out and then I just grew to be quite neutral about it. And then um, I went and got my hair done and now I, I don't... Well, that was in August and I don't know if I hate it or like it, but it's been washed this morning so it's still a bit wet and a bit all over the place but I can't work out if I hate it or like it and it feels incredibly boring and I feel like I actually look my age now which um you know heaven forbid a woman looks her age oh gosh I've always had an issue with um aging and the passing of time which seems to have just got worse over the past two years um in the fact that time seems to be passing ever quicker 
and I can't get a hold of it. It's weird. Got a bit deep. Didn't mean to get that deep. Uh, East Anglia Yarn Festival is actually going to be my first yarn festival uh, since Yarningham in 2019, which was very eventful. Um, I'm not going to go into it, but it was very eventful. Uh, but it was, that was my last yarn festival that I had and little did I know that that would be my last yarn festival of the year because I, um, Not Even Yarn Expo was in the November of that year and, it, and I wanted to initially do it but it was held on the day after my wedding so <laughs> didn't, didn't vend at that one but my mum and auntie um, went and looked around it and we went off on our mini moon, Mario and I. Anyway, um, it was, yeah, so first of all, I have gone for a double booth. The last yarn festival I did, I didn't have sparkle sock or merino sock as a base. So I think I brought that in after that yarn festival. So I at least need two more grid walls, maybe three if I bring along the yak. But I have a three meter by three meter space to fill up. Now that is the size of the gazebo that Mario uses at his market, so I have a good gauge as to what size that is, but the flaw is, is that Mario takes up most of that gazebo space with his van, and his van sticks out the back. So, uh, yes. I need to work out how to fill it. I also have requested two tables. So, um, yeah, I've got a lot of stitch markers to make that I should have, I mean I have made a head start on, I have a list on my phone of how many I've got and I've got a list upstairs on how many I need to make. So I just need to actually do the making of it because it's going to come up very quickly and I'm going to have a lot of yarn that I need to dye. And yeah. This is when what happened at the Yorkshire Yarn Fest in 2020 and then it got cancelled the week before and I'd spent all this time making all this stuff. But then I put it online and it sold and I had the best takings I've ever had in my life in March of 2020. It was actually insane and no month, mm, yeah no, no month has come close to that month. <laughs> it was it was actually ridiculous so, and sorry I went off on a tangent again but I took far more money than I would have done had I gone and done the in-person show I took far more money online um but yeah Yorkshire Yarn Fest and then there's also uh no East Anglia Yarn Festival and then there's also the Wool Monty and that is in June that is the 18th and 19th of June I think I really need to get my planner out and write them on. Oh no, that's not it, that's the Walmart company. I didn't mean to click that. The Wool Monty, Monty Show, Wool Monty Show. Um, oh, this still says the 2021 date. That is not the right date. Well, it's in June at some point. I wanna say 18th, 19th, something like that. That's in Sheffield. And then those are my only two shows that I have booked in. I got into Yarningham last year, but I didn't do Yarningham last year because I was still, no, not Yarningham, Yarndale. Because I was f still feeling quite unsure about everything, um, which was fair enough. So I didn't do Yarndale, but um, applications for it. So I got into Yarndale 2020, which is mad because I really didn't expect myself to get into it in 2020. But applications for that open in um, January, so I need to decide. I mean, I could apply and then see if I get in, and if I don't get in, then that's my decision made for me. But if I do get in, then I actually have to make a decision. So I don't do too many yarn festivals in a year because um, I actually, looking at my finances in 2019, because of the time it takes to make all the stuff ready for a show, it means I don't have shop updates, which means I don't have money coming in. And then when I do the show, I don't earn enough money to cover those months. I don't know if that makes sense. Hypothetically, 
And this actually is hypothetical. Say I take in an average of a thousand pounds a month and then when I'm prepping everything for yarn shows I can't sell stuff so then my sale, my I make less to put in my shop so my sales dip to 400, 500. And then I do the yarn show, um, oh and that's over like three months. And then I do the yarn show and then my takings for the yarn show are one and a half thousand pounds doesn't cover the months I've lost plus the month plus that month so it's difficult to yeah so I'm trying not to do too many yarn, too many yarn shows because it's financially actually not worth it for me but I really enjoy doing them because I enjoy customer facing chatting to you all meeting you all seeing you all um, and it's quite fun to sell your stuff in person apart from I'm just waving around a crochet hook. Apart from when people um, think that you can't hear, or don't care if you can hear, I suppose, and uh, loudly declare that they could make it themselves for cheaper. It's like, well, yeah, you could. But this st stitch marker took me almost, I don't know, what, 18 minutes to make? I filmed it. The whole, vi the whole, the whole video is 19 minutes, but then I to pause it because I had to adjust the camera. So we'll say 18 minutes to make this stitch marker. And uh, yeah. Plus time. It's not really cheaper. Plus, made by my beautiful fair hands. Priceless mate, that's priceless. <laughs> um, yeah, I need to decide about clubs for next year and actually seriously sit down and think about them because I haven't sat down and thought about them. Um, I kind of, I was tempted to retire the Nitticaroll Yarn Club, but I really enjoyed doing it. And now there's campaign three. So maybe I could do campaign three of the Nitticaroll Yarn Club. Hmm, because that would be good, it would be good. And I, or I could think of another club, I could do like a Monsters Club. But the Nitticore Yarn Club is just, yeah, it pushes me out of my boundaries a little bit. And all the artworks are always so beautiful and so colourful and so fun. Whereas Monster Artwork, they're all... That's not true, I was going to say they're all similar colour, no they're not, they're all very different. But, um, yeah. Plus now this will be my fourth year running it, so it feels a, feel, it would feel a shame if I were to stop it now. Sorry, I got distracted because opposite are switching their lights on and they're flashing. <laughs> the neighbours aren't flashing. Oh God, the lights, the lights are flashing. My neighbours are not. They are not the naked neighbours, sorry. That was a tangent I wasn't expecting. And then there's the Stitch Marker Club, and um, because my creativity doesn't lie hugely in pattern creation, I go through spells. Sometimes I can come up with designs for bead, bead weaving, and I'm in a really, like, designy mood, and it's great and fantastic. Other times, I can't think of anything. Um, so, yeah, I'm worried I'm going to run out of designs, because I keep having to, this once again will be my fourth year of doing it? Or will it be my third year of doing it? Third year of doing it, and it was my third year of the Nitka Royal Yarn Club, because, no, because I've had two years of campaign two. I've had one year of campaign one, two years of campaign two, and now I'm in campaign three. And yes, yeah, so this is my fourth year of the Stitch Marker Club. Oh my God, time. Time passing. Uh, so yeah, coming up with new patterns all the time for, yeah, I've done 36 new patterns. And I'm now going to come up with another 12. It's just a bit, oh God. And because it's me, I don't plan that far in advance. You know I don't plan that far in advance. I fully fly by the seat of my pants. And I also want to be bringing new patterns to the shop. Oh, balance. There was me thinking, oh yeah, 2022 is the year I'm going to have my life together. And we're nearing the end of 2021 and I can't help but panic about how my life is not together in the slightest. And yeah, this tea is cold. 
Um, I very much enjoy red velvet tea. I cannot link it for you, for it is a seasonal special around Valentine's Day. Or they might have it in their Boxing Day sale. They sometimes bring back teas, uh, seasonal teas in their Boxing Day sale, so keep an eye out for it. But it's fun because it's pink. Plus very tasty. Um, but yes, that is, I'm probably just going to leave you to watch the rest of me bead weaving. I might even have sped this up so it matches. Who knows? Um, <laughs> but yeah, I visited, blah, 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 edited all the video and everything this morning, you know, the routine by now. And yeah, the cats were pretty zoomy. We managed to give them their worming tablets. So yesterday I was bragging about how we put it in with some of like the paste treat and they love it and they lap it up and they did that last time but this time they were a bit wiser to it. So we put some paste treat in and then we then the, Miso ate some of that but then didn't eat much of it so then we had some mackerel left over from the day before so we put some of that in and then she lapped a bit more up and then she wasn't fussed because when we first got the cats whenever we fed them they would like inhale their food almost. But now they're more grazers, both of them are more grazers. So they'll eat a little bit and then they'll go off and have a nap. And then they'll come back and eat a bit more and then they'll go off and have a nap. And it's just a bit, I don't know, because it's, it's just, it's different. Oh, the lights have gone off again. Um, yeah, it's just different to how they were, but I don't know if that's because it's now winter. Maybe they're using less energy because they're sleeping more. So they don't want to eat everything as quickly and they're trying to like, but I can't, I can't work it out. But um, yeah, they, we managed to give them all of their uh, worming tablets, which is good. And that I've made good progress on my second sleeve and hopefully will finish it today. I finished all the decreases and now I'm just knitting straight and it's like 20 something stitches on each needle. So it flies by, um, but yeah. Okay, now I'm going to leave you to finish watching it and I'll uh, check in with you in a little bit because I'm just going to keep bead weaving these. The goal is to make 10 today but who knows because it's already one o'clock. Yeah I had a slow morning, I overslept and then um, editing took time and then showered and then uh, bead weaving. <laughs> I don't need to explain myself to you, you're all just so lovely. Oh, I'm off. I just went to switch on the tree and the lights aren't working so I imagine the cat is stuck the cat is fine she got her head stuck in the wires that's why they're not allowed in the living room without an adult <laughs> but yes we went to switch the Christmas lights on and the lights aren't working so imagine one of the cats has chewed the lights So now I need to take all the decorations off the tree and take all the lights off the tree and put all a new set of lights on. This was not the plan for the day. But we've put, Mary has put some other lights on over the top. But they don't look as good as our other lights looked. How sad. They could have done this after Christmas, I wouldn't have minded, but... Here I am on the floor of the dye shed once again. Um, Mario managed to take the lights off without moving the decoration and, and is now putting the second set of lights on and he asked me to leave him to it. So I've left him to it. Um, I thought I would escape up here and open some advent goodies for you all. I'm still uh, making the teacups. I've made five so far. I seem to be speeding through it, which is great. 
Um, and yeah, that is all. I just have another five to make and then I can finish Mary E's jumper, hopefully, at least knit a bit more of it. Um, starting with my Chromatic Yarns Advent Calendar, my own hand dyed yarn in colours inspired by Dungeons and Dragons because I not only make beaded stitch markers, I also dye yarn. Today's colourway is Dragon's Breath and I really like this one. It's fiery, it's a fiery colour. Ooh, I threw it on the floor. It's a fiery colour and uh, yeah. It's really cool. It's like oranges and yellows and reds with some speckles of brown and it's just, it's a fun one. It's a fun one. I'm going to be knitting my advent project for my own hand dyed yarn. I'm guessing between Christmas and New Year. I could have my Fibre Fox advent as a New Year's cast on, but I need to finish this whip first because of course I do. Anyway, moving on to my Bird Blend Tea advent calendar. Mary has made me a cup of tea downstairs. Just biscuit brew. <gasps> Today's tea is Christmas cake. Mario also really loves this one. It is three favorite things in one, tea, cake, and Christmas. It's a Sri Lankan black tea, cinnamon, cloves, orange peel, pine needles, almond pieces, vanilla pieces, and natural flavoring. It's a black tea, and you can have it with or without milk, and yeah. It is one that he really likes, so he's going to be pleased to hear about that. And then we are moving on to the Fibre Fox Advent Calendar. I will show you yesterday's colour because as I was editing the video I realised it wasn't an accurate depiction of the colour so I thought I'd show you it again. So this is yesterday's colourway and yeah that's pretty accurate. Like a bluish grey and it's really pretty. Looks like it's got some navy speckles in it as well. Really nice. That colourway was called Blue Christmas and that was yesterday's colourway. So today's colourway is what I'm moving on to now. Pop that back in. Now I'm moving on to 21. This one is called Silent Night and um, it's got some undyed areas and then some light blue, almost aqua colours uh, with the navy speckles again. And yeah, there's some speckly bits. And it's really pretty, really pretty. Last year I had the idea, but it was too close to Christmas for me to do it. And this year I just haven't had the capacity to even think about Christmas colourways. Um, to do like Christmas Carol D&D &D themed puns. So Oh Holy Night would be a paladin. <laughs> and then um, Silent Night would be a Kenku fighter of some form and yeah they were the two ideas that I had anyway I haven't really thought of any more but um, it made me laugh so much that Silent Night would be a Kenku fighter or I guess could be Paladin as well no Oh Holy Night has to be a Paladin um, yeah the cats are very zoomy so we've opened the back door for them uh, to allow them to go outside should they want to um, we shall see. Another reason I've escaped upstairs, really, because I don't really want to have to think about my little babies running around outside. But the tumble dryer's on, and they have to go past the tumble dryer to get outside. They're a bit scared of it, so I don't know if they will. Kimchi will. I don't know if Miso will. She's a bit more of a home bird, I think, whereas Kimchi's always desperate to get out, so... I am going to go finish the cup of tea that Mario made for me and um, keep beading these stitch markers. folks sorry it's now the next day um yeah I was feeling really tired yesterday so I filmed less but we had a good natter whilst I was bead weaving so that is more than fine um Mario sorted out the tree which was lovely he took the lights off and put more lights on oh I told you this um and then 
I was just spent the evening knitting because I had a, I had the jumper to finish. And yes, you heard that right, had. I will show you the jumper in all its glory in tomorrow's vlog um, because I will be blocking it. I need to try and think of somewhere to block it where the cats won't sleep on it. Where it's also warm. It's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a tough one. But yeah, I need to block the jumper. So that is going to be today's job, which you'll see in tomorrow's vlog. And I will make sure I don't look like this. This is just morning. I've just showered and dressed and don't yet have makeup on and should probably put some on and all of that fun stuff. But I am going to round out the vlog. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's a bit of a different one today, but that's okay. It's fun to mix things up sometimes. When you're filming your life every day for 25 days, um, it can get a bit intense and quite repetitive, especially because um, cases are rising in the UK now. And because we're in the run up to Christmas, we, Mario and I, are being extra careful. So it means that we're not going out and doing any of the fun things that we wanted to do. Like there was a carol service on Sunday that I wanted to go to, but I don't want to catch anything. And then Mario can't do his Christmas orders and have, we'll have to refund all of those. And he's got quite a few of them now and we don't really want him to have to refund anyone's orders, especially all of everyone's orders. So yes, we're being extra careful, extra cautious. And it just means that um, we're going out and doing fewer fun things than we wanted to, but Hey, such is, the, such is the life when you're celebrating Christmas in a pandemic. It sucks, but it's the way it is. Um, but yeah, I know it's a bit repetitive. And I'm trying to switch up and keep it different, but it's difficult when I have limited stuff that I'm doing. And I need to see it through to the end because I started it, therefore I shall finish it. Um, plus, now we've got very few days left to finish. Thanks so much for watching, like I've already said. If you'd like to follow me on social media, please feel free. Links, as always, can be found in the description box below, along with any other information that I think you might need, like the tea of the day. And if you fancy having a cup of Christmas cake. Ooh, almost forgot what the tea was then. Thank you, Brain, for clicking in. And um, feel free to subscribe. I'm posting a video every day in the run-up to Christmas. You have quite a backlog to catch up on. But, you know, there's time. If, you're happen if you happen to be self-isolating with nothing else to do, you have time. Wonderful. And uh, yeah, give the video a thumbs up. It really helps me out in the YouTube algorithm. And what has happened to my angel? It's gone a bit wonky. I need to fix it. Anyway. With all that being said, thank you so, so much for watching. It's been lovely spending the day with you. And I will see you very soon in tomorrow's video. Bye.